So, you know why you're here. One of the most frequently asked questions on a lot of the class guide videos I've made is, what do I think is the strongest class in the game? Well, today I'm going to actually answer that question, so let's get started. Now, as a disclaimer, this is my personal opinion on how I see classes in New Genesis. If you don't agree with a placement I've made, that's perfectly okay, because every class in this game, honestly speaking, is super close in power and has their own personal identity. Feel free to discuss any placements in the comments down below. Now, for the tier lists themselves, I will be dividing the classes into three different tiers as I believe that is the best way to represent the classes and how they work in this game. These tier lists will be Ease of Use, Sustained DPS, and Burst DPS. I will be ranking the classes with number 1 being the strongest and number 6 is less strong since the power levels are actually pretty equal. I'll also be explaining why I put a class in its position as well. And just as a reminder, all rankings here are just my personal viewpoints of all the classes and I have no qualifications for why you should trust my rankings. So with all of that said, let the rankings begin. First, let's go over my personal ease of use rankings. Here I ranked every single class based on how I personally think it's easy to pick up the class and do moderately well. So here it is. Force, Ranger, Hunter, Tekker, Gunner, Fighter. In that order. So now, let me explain why I put each class where it is. In my opinion, Force is by far the easiest class to pick up in the game and do relatively well with. The long-range nature of this class, along with its very generous weapon action, makes this a very friendly class that does have a nice skill ceiling, but also an incredibly low entry barrier. The mobbing on Force is also really good, and the PP management is nearly non-existent due to its very good tools. And next on our list is Ranger, which I put at number 2 due to how easy it is to pick up Rifle and Launcher. Both of these weapons provide extremely good consistent damage and they're very straightforward. Active skills are also super straightforward on Ranger, you put Blight Rounds on the boss and it dies. Spread Shot you press when the bar fills up and it does a lot of damage. The only downside to Ranger honestly is you have to learn how to dodge with no weapon action parry, but also you can stay a pretty far distance away which is very nice on this class. And next at number 3 we have Hunter. Hunter in my opinion is one of the easiest melee classes to pick up thanks to all the failsafes and its class skills but also how easy it is to use a weapon. So this is a true jack of all trades with a low entry barrier but a surprisingly high skill ceiling from maxing the use out of Hunter Arts Avenger. Now onto Tekker at number 4, this class if you focus solely on Wand is severely range limited. You do have access to techs, but your PP management isn't as good as Rod. So assuming that you play this mostly in the melee range, it is kinda harder to pick up since it does not have as many failsafes as Hunter, but it does have shift on D-band, which makes up for everything. And now onto, in my opinion, the two hardest classes to pick up, Gunner and Fighter. Gunner is hard because there's definitely a steep learning curve. There's a lot of class skills and a lot of things you need to juggle just to make sure your gunner works. But once you learn the nuances and how to actually do all of that, gunner is probably one of the easiest classes to play in the game. And finally, fighter. Fighter is by far, in my opinion, one of the hardest classes to pick up and do good with. Now the reason I say this is the hardest class is because of severely limited range. With great power comes very stubby ranges. So, to get the most out of your fighter, you will need to get really comfortable with your weapons parry. On top of this, PP management also on fighter is definitely a learning curve which can be supplemented by subclasses. So now that you have a general idea of how easy it is to use a class, let's talk about the damage. First, we're going to start with sustained DPS. Sustained DPS refers to how consistent a class's damage is across the fight, so here's my ranking. Force, Gunner, Ranger, Tekker, Fighter, and Hunter. In that order. Now time for some explanations. Force, as mentioned before, does very consistent damage just by its design. 
Through continuously outputting your virtually max damage at any range makes this class's sustain incredibly good and there's nothing really much to be said. So on to Gunner. Gunner is definitely a flurry of damage no matter the range. Up close you have Point Blank and far away you have Bullet Rate. Both of these can trigger Chain Trigger and that gives Gunner extremely consistent damage no matter the range. Honestly, if you get over the learning curve, this is probably one of the most consistent classes in the game. Now, for Ranger spot at number 3, Fear Racer can be set up at any point and held down for max damage. So you might be wondering, why is this lower than Gunner? Well, you can be interrupted from Fear Racer through a mechanic found in NGS called Death. The startup animation for Fear Racer is incredibly long, but once you get it out, it's some of the most consistently high damage in the game. But, with how agile bosses are in NGS, repositioning really hurts how consistent you can be. However, multi-hit does provide very consistent and very good damage as you reposition. So, between this class and Gunner, I would actually put them in the same position, so this was a pretty hard choice. And next is Tekker. When you shift between Wan and Talos, it's extremely consistent. Talos alone, in my opinion, is one of the most consistent damaging tools in this game. However, in terms of sustain, this is only lower if you choose to main exclusively Wand, since I would put that more towards a melee side as you spend more time photon dashing than hitting the boss. Now, on that note, let's talk about Fighter and Hunter. So, Fighter and Hunter I rank last. Fighter I rank slightly higher than Hunter because if you do use Twin Daggers it is pretty consistent and you can maintain uptime through Acceleration Drive's Gap Closer. However, the other two options are pretty lackluster in chasing and you'll have to Photon Dash your way over. And that leaves Hunter at number 6. Hunter runs into the same exact issues as Fighter, but it does have large ranges on its attacks which pretty much make up for it. Honestly, Hunter and Fighter are pretty much in the same tier for me because you do spend a lot of time photon dashing and gliding towards your boss. And now onto the most hyped for rankings, Burst DPS. Burst DPS is how much damage can you cram in a short amount of time. With the addition of down states and NGS, this becomes very useful and important. It also generally offsets low sustained DPS a class might have. This is also usually the metric that I see a lot of people use when they talk about their DPS tier lists or their damage in general. Burst DPS is assuming the weak point is accessible, the boss is in down state, and you have a short amount of time before the weak point closes. So, on that note, here's my rankings. Fighter, Gunner, Hunter, Force, Tekker, Ranger. Now for some explanations. Fighter is a king of burst DPS in my opinion. Overload is a huge damage increase, defeat advantage gives you 15% extra damage on down states, and the weakness of fighter completely disappears when it's time to throw down on a down boss. I don't really think anything can equal the amount of crazy damage you can output here from just how ridiculously fast fighter can hit with high numbers as well. Next is Gunner. Gunner, when you line up Chain Trigger optimally, has ridiculous amounts of bursts in a very short amount of time. The amount of PP dumping you can do into instant full PP for more PP dumping makes Gunner a very strong burst class when played correctly. Now onto Hunter. Hunter has pretty good burst DPS. It's not at the level of Gunner or Fighter, but it is very easy to pull off when the time comes. Overall, when a burst phase happens, the simplicity of Hunter's gameplay makes burst phases very consistent and gives you a lot of leeway. And now at number 4, let's talk about Force. Force has Photon Flare, which does give Force an actual burst phase cooldown to use. This can lead to some very high damage when you fully optimize your Photon Flare rotation on a downed enemy. This is something that requires a little bit more thought since you do have to take elemental weaknesses into account, but overall it's not too bad. And now at number 5 we have Tekker. Tekker does have some decent bursts on a wand, but it's nowhere near as Hunter from what I've tested. You can hit some pretty disgustingly high numbers from a fully charged Swiss Smash, however. And that's pretty much why it's down here. 
the lack of a burst phase active like Photon Flare or Overload makes Tekker more on the sustain side than the burst side. And finally, we have Ranger at number 6. Now this one is very tricky to put here. If you're a Ranger main, you probably know about the Blight Round trick that allows you to dump all of your Blight Rounds really fast for high damage. This means that Ranger actually has pretty good bursts, but more often than not, doing that trick will make the Blight Round be on a random part from Collision. On top of that, if you have multiple Rangers doing that, then Blight Rounds might as well not exist since there's a high chance it won't be on the weak point. Now Launcher, while it does deal a lot of damage, is mostly sustain overall. This doesn't make it bad during bursts at all, in fact it's really strong since multi-hit ignores the laws of physics as you get in position and Fear Racer, when held down, is just ridiculously good damage. Now honestly, Ranger is very tricky to put on the rankings for me, I'd probably put Ranger, Tekker, and Force, honestly speaking, all within the same burst class. So you're probably wondering, okay, so what is exactly the best class in the game, and my answer is none of them. It really comes down to your player skill along with your gear and how good you perform with the class. The classes themselves are so close together in performance due to everyone having pros and cons, and this may seem like a bad thing, but honestly, it's a good thing to have your class be weak at something. Also, this leads to a lot of subclass versatility as your choice in subclass helps determine your personal playstyle. So, comment down below why you chose your main. For me, I chose Gunner since I'm a huge fan of Resonance of Fate, but now I main Hunter as I wait for Braver. And that pretty much concludes the video. If you have any comments or you want to share your personal rankings, feel free to comment down below. Also, if you have any questions about anything, I'll do my best to answer them as well. Thank you so much for watching everyone, and I hope you have a great day today. Usually I do social media plugs, but that is way too long, and I'm going to end the video here, and I'll see you all Wednesday with the new series.